God bless you. This is Pastor Jamie, and this is our Love Notes Bible Study. Yes, for Love Church, this is our Love Notes Bible Study. Welcome. Thank you for joining us, and we're going to go right into our study. Um, our first scripture, um, our first scripture is the thematic scripture we're going with, and yeah, as you know, um, we've been in the First Corinthians, the thirteenth chapter, and now we're going to go to the sixth verse. And a key verse, um, key phrase, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Once again, 1 Corinthians 13 chapter and the sixth verse reads, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Today we're going to talk about truth and justice. Once again, truth and justice. Um, when the scripture talks about rejoicing in truth, it's literally talking about truth. What is honest? Um, what is what is pure? What is the right thing? Um, what we should be striving for, not only to live, but to declare and walk and speak and act in, walking in the truth of the Lord. Uh, Jesus calls himself the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father, but by him. Amen. So we should be striving for the truth. But the part we're going to focus on is that that um, one interesting part just before that, and it says rejoice is not in iniquity. Now, sometimes there could be a confusion about what iniquity is. It's not a word commonly used nowadays. It's not a word that um, people use um, back and forth in, in a lot of their dealings. So what I'm going to do is um, briefly uh, tell you about its meaning and briefly tell you how it relates to us. Um, a direct a direct translation from the Greek for the word um, iniquity actually comes out to mean injustice. That's right, injustice. So uh, we can think about what injustice is um, even in today's society when there seems to be inequity um, amongst um, individuals or groups or nations or communities. Um, we recognize it as injustice, a great example, the movement in the 60s or the modern movement now um, for uh, uh, racial justice. Um, so us the uh, disparities in treatment of individuals. And so we can see an idea of what injustice is. It's when justice is denied. The proper justice of an individual is denied. The Bible is speaking against this and it's telling us that in just we do not rejoice in injustice as believers if we love one another we're not going to rejoice in the injustice that one another may face as a matter of fact we should rejoice in the other way we should rejoice in truth we should rejoice in when good happens to your brother and your neighbor when god makes a way when justice hallelujah when justice prevails in the life for someone else that is what we should rejoice in Glory be to God. Now, there are a number of words when it talks about sin and, and wrongdoing and, and iniquity even goes further beyond the idea of, of justice. And it goes to um, uh, uh, iniquity goes to the, the idea of, of, of doing the wrong thing and and and, and working against God. Um, and the um, there are three words we're going to look at when it comes to um the idea of iniquity in, in a comparison role. And we're going to talk about um, uh, sin, iniquity, and transgression. Sin, iniquity, and transgression. Uh, Psalms, the 51st Psalm, David actually, in uh, the 51st Psalm, says all three of these words. All three of these words, all three of these phrases, um, David addresses in his writing. The 51st Psalm um, starts out to the chief musician, a Psalm of David, when Nathan the prophet came to him after he had gone into Bathsheba. Anybody who knows about the story of David knows about how David um, sinned. Um, first, he sinned with Bathsheba by laying with her. Then he um, sinned um, by lying, glory be to God, lying to Nathan and putting him um, and trying to cover up his sin by having Nathan lie with Bathsheba and finally um, sinning by committing in essence murder by sending, not Nathan, I meant to say um, Uriah, excuse me, Nathan was a prophet who told David about his sin, excuse me, Uriah, um, laying with Uriah's wife, Uriah's wife Bathsheba, 
first of all by by sleeping with her um i'm having relations with another man's wife secondly he um he tries to cover it up by having Uriah go home to his wife when Uriah would not go home with his wife. Um, thirdly, David put Uriah on the front line of the battle for Uriah to be killed, in essence, committing murder and having Uriah killed to cover up his own sin. So uh, let's look. Let's look at the scripture here. Um, like I said, um, after he had gone in, um, this is the first verse, after he had gone into Bathsheba. And this is what David says, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multiple of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Verse two, wash me thoroughly for my iniquity and thoroughly, David says in the second verse, and cleanse me for my sin. David is asking for forgiveness or God's grace on three different things. Isn't it interesting? He asked for God to um, blot out his transgressions. He asked the Lord to wash him from his iniquity and also cleanse him from his sin. First, let's look at sin. I think that's the easiest one to describe, the easiest one to talk about. Sin is transgressing against God. And um, uh, a lot of times, the best way to, to uh, describe it um, if you kind of think of um, sort of courtroom dramas and uh, sometimes they'll talk about a crime being premeditated or not premeditated um, or, um, you know, often murder, they will say it's like manslaughter. If it was a sort of an instantaneous act and they didn't think about it or they didn't plan, uh, they didn't plan on it, it will be considered a lower degree of murder. It's the same way with sin. You didn't plan on it. Um, you weren't thinking, hey, this morning I'm going to go out and um, steal or, um, you know, I'm going to go out and lie. I'm going to go out and commit a sexual sin. But you found yourself in that place and you made the wrong decision and you did sin while you're still accountable. It's a different type of thing than what we would call a um, iniquity, what we call iniquity or transgression. Iniquity. The word iniquity in the old Hebrew um, uh, brings us to a place where you twist the standard. It says you, uh, where if sin is falling short of God's standard, then iniquity is trying to twist or manipulate that standard, trying to twist and manipulate the situation to make it seem as if you didn't sin. Even though David sinned, he tried to make it seem like he didn't sin. He tried to cover it up. He tried to uh, 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 switch up the situation to make it seem as though that he was not responsible for what he had done, that he, that, that it, you know, sort of the t the take the responsibility away from him Glory be to God and make it seem like nothing happened. How many times have we done that? Try to try to cover up our sin or try to justify our sin or try to act like what we did wasn't a sin at all. Um, you know, uh, a good example um, in um, uh, uh, stealing. Uh, sometimes people will say, oh, no, it's OK to steal. They have insurance for that. You know, they won't feel the pain or, you know, that company won't miss that item because they have insurance over it or they got a million. They have a, a million. Um, we'll say the word widget. Sound weird. They have a million widgets. They're not going to miss you stealing one or two. Um, there's a whole jar full of cookies. They're not going to miss me taking one or two little cookies, you know, sort of justifying my sin or my sin does not hurt anybody else. You know, me and this lady, we want to do our thing. I and mean, if I'm not married, she's not married and we're, we're single and we're doing our own thing. We're not hurting anybody. So, you know, I can justify my sin. That mentality, that attitude is iniquity. I'm trying to change the standard. I'm trying to live in a wicked way. Use a wicked justification. Now, iniquity can go larger to uh, um, um, uh, systems and governments and um, organizations and people, um, even um, so-called cults or what they would call themselves ministries, can operate in a spirit of iniquity and, and an iniquitous mindset in which they try to change the standard. Um, and so, you know, I would I would say that with iniquity, it can hit on a lot of different levels. Sometimes it's not something as small in, you know, in sort of our, our human level as a cookie jar. But sometimes iniquity can be something as large as twisting the standard about a rule is or a law is or something that does have impact on other people's life. Like David, what he did had an impact on someone else's life, but he still tried to twist the thing. He still tried to cover the thing by sending Uriah to go lay with Bathsheba. Finally, when we get to a transgression, a transgression 
is willfully doing wrong, knowing what you're doing, knowing that it's wrong, but doing it anyway. Finally, David puts Uriah on the front line, knowing that this will kill him. He's piling on on the sin he already did. He's piling on on the iniquity he already committed. And he goes as far as to commit a transgression against God by completely, by completely, willfully going against the will of God and with an arrogant and arrogant attitude. This is why David goes, breaks it down in this first verse um, all the way to the second verse and goes from his most extreme thing to his least, th the least thing, even though all sin, all unrighteousness is sin. Everything that he did, um, if we done, will, will destine us for a burning hell unless we ask for forgiveness. Now, the beautiful thing about this is that God loved David so much that he sent the prophet Nathan to call David out. God loved David enough that David had an opportunity to get forgiveness of his sin. Hallelujah. Forgiveness for his iniquity. And forgiveness for his transgression. Yes, David said, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Or what do you have in your life? Now, I'm going to tell you something. You say, well, why did Paul, when he wrote this 13th ch uh, chapter of Corinthians, why is he talking about iniquity? Um, rejoicing in iniquity. What does that have to do with loving my brother or loving my neighbor? Well, it, when I when I rejoice in in someone else's iniquity, when I rejoice in someone else's iniquity, I'm rejoicing in them harming someone else. Remember, the Greek word goes to injustice. Well, you say, well, what do you mean? Um, what what if um, their iniquity, what if they're doing or their cover up or what they're trying to do or their sin or their transgression doesn't seem to harm anybody else? You're still harming because you sinning against God. People are sinning against God. And when you sin against God, you hurt God's heart. So when we rejoice in iniquity, when we are like patting people on the back for the wrong they did, glory be to God. Um, when we're co-signing on people's sin, somebody, somebody goes and they, um, they, um, they scam, they scam the government. And we, and we say, I know that's right. Yeah, you better do that. Or, you know, we co-sign or, or somebody goes out and, um, uh, uh, um, uh, curses somebody, cusses them out or hurts somebody or hits somebody, punches somebody in the face and we're patting them on the back and we're rejoicing in it and we're glorifying that sin. We're glorifying that iniquity and we're glorifying their transgressions. God is not pleased and we're not showing love because we think we're showing love to the person doing the wrong. In actuality, we're showing a lack of love for the victim of their sin. And all sin has victims. Whether it be God, whether it be you, whether it be another individual, all sin has a victim. So I'm here to tell you right now, as believers, we don't rejoice in injustice. We don't enjoy, rejoice in sin. We don't rejoice in transgressions. We don't rejoice in iniquity. No, we rejoice in truth. We celebrate great truth. We celebrate God's will. We celebrate the victory in Jesus. We celebrate someone getting redeemed, getting saved. We celebrate someone, hallelujah, uh, repenting and turning around and going the right way. When you're involved in iniquity, you're going forward and doing something without repentance. It's not like you did it and said, oh, I'm sorry. No, David was planning and setting that, that thing up. He had a premeditated sin. Where are you in your life? Are you in participating in a premeditated sin or even worse? Are you celebrating people's premeditated sin? I pray that we find a way in our hearts and our minds and our spirits and our souls not to rejoice in iniquity, but to rejoice in truth, to show love, hallelujah, that pure agape love to one another by doing the right thing and encouraging the right thing. God bless you. I'm grateful that you decided to join us. I'm grateful that you decided to join us here for Love Notes. You can always join us here 
glory be to God on social media or in our um on our Zoom um um our Zoom class, which after the video plays gives the um the the church the, the member or those in the Bible study an opportunity to ask questions for the pastor and for me to respond. So I'm grateful that you decided to join us here at Love Notes. Um, once again, it is every uh, uh Wednesday at six o'clock. Love Notes Bible Study every Wednesday at six o'clock. We're looking forward to we're looking forward to seeing you next week. God bless you. I'm glad you're here. Um, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your people. We thank you for your love towards us. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, bless all of those who are in the hearing of my word. Lord, in the name of Jesus, bless them to know the difference between right and wrong. And not only that, God, bless them with the courage and the strength and the discipline to do the right thing, to listen to your voice, to do your will. Lord, in the name of Jesus, to cast aside every every weight and the sin that easily beset us, God, but to do your will. Hallelujah, Lord, to live holy for you in these last and evil days. Bless us and keep us. Put a hedge of protection around us and a blood covering over us, God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask in all these things you will do exceeding abundantly and above all we ask or think according to the power that works in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I love you. Remember, remember, we're glad to have you here. And remember, finally, love loves you. God bless you.